there, Laura. How are you today? Yeah, good, thank you. So the first question that I've got for you is just um, tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. Okay, so I've been running LGM Bookkeeping for uh, just over 10 years now. Um, I set up originally because I moved 100 miles um, to be with my husband. Oh, wow. So I, previous to that, I'd sort of, I've always been into maths and into numbers and done sort of various things. I was a cricket scorer sort of part time and, um, and, and always been interested in stats and numbers and all those kind of things. So um, I was employed when I met my husband and part of my employed role in I was a practice manager for a wellness clinic and part of that was in was sort of making sure that all the systems were running and I sort of done MVQs around business admin and business um, sort of business management as well and so I I did the bookkeeping um, under the watchful eye of the accountant um, yeah. so <laughs> as part of my role and when I sort of made the decision, I mean, my husband and I have been dating for a year and sort of doing one weekend up, one weekend down and all the rest of it. And he said, oh, move in. Um, I was trying to work out what I could do um, and what I wanted to do for work. So at that time, I had some health issues. So I liked numbers. Um, I, I was sort of I was an A grade student, all that kind of thing. But because of my health issues, I never went to university. So I didn't have any formal qualifications. I knew I couldn't at that stage work full time. So trying to find something where I didn't drive at that stage. I couldn't work full time. I mean, wow. quite a little, a little bit of a <coughs> rural community. Um, so I did things like calling the GP to ask to be receptionist and those kind of things. And no one yeah. got back to me. And I was chatting to the accountant and he said, look, I've got too much work. And I've got people, he said, I know you, I've known you for a while. I think you'd be really good at bookkeeping and I've got work that I could give you. Um, and although he's not a chartered accountant and he was registered with HMRC, I decided that I wanted to do my qualifications and do them all sort of set up. But obviously I knew I couldn't go, I wasn't in a position to be able to get to university or wasn't in a position even perhaps to do, I needed the learning to be on my own pace. Yeah. and be able to do it because I knew I could complete it but I knew that because of my health issues I knew that it wasn't going to be a structured way that I was going to be able to do that um so I sort of did some research and came across the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers um obviously and then at that time looked at their options for sort of self-study or distance learning um and set up and did my um ICB exams it took me about nine months um, oh, wow. to do all my ICB exams at that point you had a separate computerized one as well so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so to do your ex exams and then you went in it's actually like one of the driving test centers and you sit there and you go through and you do your exam and then um, pass those obviously uh, as I say it took me about nine months to do to the point at which I got to what was then AICB and what is now MICB yeah. so enough of a enough of a qualification for me to then apply for my practice license so I did that got my qualifications applied for my practice license went around my little town with little flyers <laughs> and gained about five clients two of which I still have <laughs> that's um, brilliant that's brilliant though when wow. I, when I, one did go away and then came back. Um, but yeah, so so sort of it for the first three, four years, very sort of low key. I mean, when I first started, I had paper ledgers and some of it I'd do on paper and spreadsheets or whatever else. Obviously, trained in Sage and known how to use Sage previously. Um, use free agent for one of the account the one of the bits of work the accountant subcontracted out to me. Um, little bits there and there sort of got in touch um and then I had a couple of clients sort of call up and 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 say oh you're in the local area and then their accountants are like oh we're looking for a good bookkeeper can you do other clients of ours oh, fantastic. Um, and then I have a client oh, I had a client that was part of a franchise and their franchise dictated them to move on to zero when they were first in the UK market and oh well 
well, not first, but like six, seven years ago. When so when no one had heard of Zero, and it yeah. was like, <laughs> um, and they were on stage, and it was like, well, that was perfect because instead of having to go to their office every once a month and be sat with them, I could do it all remotely and all this kind of thing. And and I think that's partly why they dictated it because it meant that the like the head office could log in and look at everything all around yeah. the country rather than having it all on. So I did that. I did kind of my zero qualifications, became a zero partner, and then the last sort of three or four years as my business has grown and I've been able to work it around my health and being able to manage things and my health's improved the last couple of years and especially the last 18 months have kind of just gone through the roof with work and with <laughs> different types of work and with different types of software and different areas and process and I'm now doing things like process reviews for clients so going in and looking at their systems and I just doing sort of one off of how they can make their systems work better for them and how they can make um, time savings as well and efficiency savings as well as um, as well as cost savings because I invariably you go into this and then you go oh you've done that oh do you know if you do this it's cheaper or you do that or you sort something out or you see something that an accountant's missed and um, and and I'm about to go limited because <laughs> I'm about to hit the bar threshold. Yeah. So I always said if I got to that stage, I would go limited. So that's that's excellent. Yeah. So and I just won the ICB Small Practice of the Year Award, and I was nominated oh, for, <laughs> nominated for two Accounting Excellence Awards, and I was nominated for one Zero Award as well. That's so. absolutely amazing to to think where you've come from and yeah. gotten this far. Where now you you're going to be limited and yeah just just even being nominated for awards it's just incredible it is that's the thing is I had this it's been a real mindset change as well of yeah, kind of yeah. I'm I went from thinking oh I'm a little small bookkeeper I don't no one cares about me like my clients just want me to be away in the background get their tax done that's it and then it's actually like quite interesting over the last year because I applied um, I entered the awards last year and I got shortlisted and didn't win for the um, ICB one and it was like actually that made me realize that there was like this little business I've grown isn't quite so little <laughs> it's possibly doing quite a good thing and um, it's kind of helped me come on leaps and bounds in the last year so it's incredible because um I was just speaking to a lady before yourself, actually, who's currently studying towards um, the ICB herself. And I was just saying uh, on the channel in general, um, because I come from an AAT and ACA background, I, I've not had that close contact with individuals who are ICB. I've done bookkeeping in the past before yeah. I did um, accountancy, but it's just nice to talk to somebody who, again, has got um, the ICB qualification and just showing what achievements you've had with the qualification it's just incredible what you can do if you put your mind to something you yeah can, you I know. think that's that's the thing and I think ICB are very good at um a their pass marks are one of the highest going so you have to know what you're doing before you pass an exam and, and you get your practice license but their team are very good at helping you so I know I know um there's Sue J who helps with new practices and things like that they're very on hand um, and then you've got things like branches um, and the branches are really helpful as well to even if it would like they all have their own little WhatsApp chat or Facebook group so you can ask those questions and I know obviously there are other resources like like Natasha's group like the AAT bookkeeping group and there's other and the six people bookkeepers and there's lots of groups like that but there's also the ICB it's really good they will connect you with other people in the same situation or you get to know so it's it's very scary when you're setting up a business because I set up a business at 21. Absolutely. I set up a business at 21, having never set up a business before <laughs> with no load of knowledge. My husband is steadily employed, but kind of like would never set up a business of his own. So to have that and to have that help there. And I said that I said that to Gary and June when I won um, was how much I think you'll see and hopefully if you're speaking to other ICB bookkeepers how much they support us and how much we really do appreciate what we get from the ICB as well because I think they are very good at not just supporting their own members but bookkeepers as a whole. Absolutely that's lovely to hear as well it's lovely so we've kind of touched on this a little bit so about um, why you chose that qualification um, and why but if you had um, again the choice to do it all over again would you have still taken the ICB yeah I, th I think as I say because I knew that I always wanted to do bookkeeping 
rather than accountancy. I like being involved in my clients in a sort of day to day basis, being more of a touch point rather than the accounting sort of tax overviews, all that kind of thing. So I like yeah. doing that side and I like being able to <laughs> hand it over to an accountant and go, right, OK, this is what the numbers say. You go work out what the best thing is to do with them in terms of a tax perspective or what the best thing for the client is. And so I really enjoy doing the bookkeeping side of things. So I haven't actually done, I haven't actually done my self-assessment uh, exam. I haven't actually done payroll exams. I'm looking at doing the level four exams, which are obviously, uh, which are like business insights and costing and budgeting. So again, more hands-on because as I say, I like working with businesses. I like working as part of the team and I like seeing how I can help businesses and the change that I can make from that. And as I said, because I wasn't in a situation whereby I could, I, I wasn't like I could get work experience or I didn't think I could get work experience at that stage and various other things. So the ICB really worked for me because it meant once I was qualified, I could set up my practice. There wasn't any sort of I need to go work in practice for X amount of years or I need to be supervised or I need to be those kind of things. I think that is really good and that does work for some people. Um, but obviously with the ICB, that's why their exam pass rate marks are, are so high is that you can just go out and start your business. So obviously they need to practice. They know you, they need to make sure that you know what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, so it did work exactly for me. And I think if I'd been with one of the other providers, um, or one of like AAT or, or I, I, I've never really looked much into the IAB I have to admit I've, I know some people with them but I, I, I don't think it would have worked for me at that situation and with my circumstances. So we've touched on this ever so slightly but um, what did you really enjoy um, from studying I think, as I say, I'm a numbers person, so I like the numbers side of things, but I liked that I could do it at my own pace. There was that support. There's obviously when you do your distance learning, you have your support for an X amount of time and you do you, you have your mocks and you have your, your tests as you go along and you obviously still have all that tutor support. But you can either fit it around. I know people that fitted it around sort of employed work and are looking to do their qualifications or for me I could just work on my own pace and it was sort of when you delve into it bookkeeping covers so much and there is so much that you actually need to know yeah it's definitely. like you start with double entry I know you start with double entry and you go from there but there is so much more to it that is involved and obviously then the next level is obviously doing the computerized thing which I know is now all, all in one anyway um but also like learning the different systems and I quite like that I'm, I'm a little bit of a, a tech geek in that I'm always up for something new in China <laughs> um, <laughs> I can relate to that um and I'm always so uh, obviously at that stage you did it all on stage you got your copy of stage and you did your thing on stage but equally how that then relates now to zero to QuickBooks whatever it is they all work off exactly the same system in the background you need to know the principles and how to do something whether that be on paper on old-fashioned t-sheets or whether that be on on a on a journal in a in a software um, but I felt that I always had that support from sort of my my tutors um and and they were very helpful and i know and now i know quite a lot of people that tutor for icb courses so a lot of the a lot of the tutors for icb and i know aat they will be people that are icb or aat members yeah, absolutely so um so i think that's really helpful because it means that the tutor is not only just sort of the teacher they've been through that scenario that you're going through and they understand actually they're in practice or they're dealing with clients and they've had people come to them with this with these questions because obviously while there are hard and fast rules there are also a lot of things that can be interpreted absolutely so I think that's the thing is having it done in that way rather than being sat in the classroom being sort of taught at um really worked well for me and how I sort of learned and it, the reason I haven't done my next exams aren't because I don't want to it's more because what fits in with my with my business and what where I can see my business going <laughs> but I think that's great I think it's great again not just with um the bookkeeping qualifications or just across the range of account qualifications that are out there they're so flexible you can just you know mold it around yourself do your exams when you want to take your exams 
there's not a lot of time pressure. I think the only time there is time pressure is if an exam is changing and the you know changing syllabus, etc. But on the whole, that doesn't happen. You know, yeah. every year it's circa every five years. So uh, apart yeah. from that, no, it's, it's um, yeah, I, th I think that's one of the things that they do very very well. Yeah, and I think the ICB now, all of them are, you can do all of them online if you need to. So they were one of the first uh -huh. ones. Obviously, some of them were online previously. <laughs> your actual exams are online and you have like your camera so you, they can check that you've not got someone like sneaking in and doing like giving you the answers and things like that. Yeah. But they um but they've moved them all online. So I know with when I did it, the mocks were all online, but then you went to a test centre. And again, there's some people... I've always been, I'm, I'm nervous about tests, but I'm, I'm okay at tests. But I know some people get really obviously nervous about that whole testing element. And again, like having the ability to do that online and being able to, some of them I know are like um, 24 hours as well. So you can do it and you can come back to it and check it again oh, wow. and things like that. So, so they're, they're done on a slightly different way all of them have their like I think the shortest one's like three hours I think so all of them have that ability to make it a, it is an exam it's a very important exam but there's there's they can do things to sort of alleviate the pressure around the exam itself <laughs> if that makes sense because no, you, you know what yeah. you're doing at your crapper <laughs> exams so having that time to be able to go back or check it or actually having that time to like read through it, know that you can read through every question properly and go through all those kind of things I think is really really helpful but I think this is where you know exams that students tend to do this is where it falls down because in the real world of accounting there are resources out there you can check the IFRS IAS um again there's just HMRC. so much HMRC AAT yeah. helplines the bookkeeping helplines so if there's something you really don't get it's unless again something needs to be submitted tomorrow the time constraints really aren't necessarily there to some yeah. extent so having the ability to go back and check your questions as you would do you know in a real world scenario really well, makes it how it's going to be you know that is one of the things I know that um Esther and some of the other sort of big ICB there's this art of search and they would say that having the art of search and knowing how to search and what to search and where to search is almost can can be very important and a very very important skill to learn again Absolutely. because as you say unless how many of times even if you're doing something like a VAT return you go back you check it two or three times before you before you submit it that's yes we have deadlines but the whole point is we should be working in advance of those deadlines so that we can query in time to go and check things and even if it's case sometimes it was like something I did yesterday and I was like I'm sure I'm right, but I'll just sort of message my accountant friend and go, I'll work this out right. And most of the time they'll come back, yes, or no, you've transposed a figure or whatever it is. But even just having, as you say, in the real world, and that's why those Facebook groups are really helpful and the ICB groups are really helpful and, and all of these things, there are so many resources out there that you know you don't have to know the number right off the top of your head at okay. that moment. And most of the time you're actually better off saying to your client, I'll check that for you and come back to you. I think now as well, um, again, not when I first started studying. So I, I was studying a decade back and there, there were not the type of resources available that there are now. So there weren't any Facebook groups. There wasn't the ability to study online like there is now. Um, yeah. And I find now I run my own Facebook group for um, specifically to AAT students. Um, but there are a few of us that, again, I'm part of, as you've seen. Um, but it's nice that... It, if you're just questioning something ever so slightly, you can put a question in there. And at any time of the day, somebody will come and say, well, have you thought about it this way? Or here's the link to where you should be looking for that information. If you can't find it yourself, which often you can, but every now and again, there's um, there's something that you've never seen before, or it's a bit ambiguous. Yeah. And you think I'll just check with like-minded people what their opinion is. And yeah, that community is always there. I think the thing is there's no stupid question or that's the way I always view it there is no stupid question because there is always going to be a situation where we come across or I come across in practice a scenario I've never seen before and I don't know how to deal with and it might not be that I know the basic principles but I don't know how to apply them to that specific case or that 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 specific client or there's more complications than there would be normally so 
it's one of those actually in our little ICB links group we've um Terry started doing a little quiz he's going to do a quiz every so often and it was just, oh, yeah. but just little things like last one was when did the when was the last date you claimed for the 2017 marriage uh, allowance transfer and just little things like that or what what scenario I think the other one was what scenario can you claim uh purchase for reclaim purchase flat if the client is uh, on FRS and it's just little things like that where you probably if you don't deal with flat rate scheme you might not know that but it's one of those things like oh actually I might not deal with it but I could go and have a look and then if I ever got asked the question I know so in some case even if you're not the one answer, asking the question or answering the question you can learn a lot from other people's Definitely. questions as well I think I'd agree with that so what would you tell yourself then if you go back five years or, or you know what tips would you give to somebody who's looking um, to study ICB or IASB and um, one of the bookkeeping qualifications I think I think the thing is, don't be, I said this to someone the other day, don't be scared. We've all, it's a bit like there is no stupid question. Don't be scared. We all started out as you are. Don't have an expectation that you feel like you need to get this far along the road um, by a certain date. Obviously, it's good to have benchmarks or a business plan or whatever it is. And obviously, some people will have, they need to earn X amount to obviously make this worthwhile. But I think take it easy on yourself is one of those things that it's like it takes a while to build your confidence in your own skills even if you know you're right sometimes when you stood aside in front of a client and I'd ask you a question <laughs> and you're like I know I'm right but and we've all been there we've all had the imposter syndrome we probably all still have the imposter syndrome every so often definitely and as I said there's always a scenario we don't know it all. I don't know it all. There will always be things I'm learning and there's always things that are changing within our industry. So it takes a while to get confident in what you're saying. It takes a while to get confident maybe in your own abilities or it did for me. Um, and obviously like having that outside recognition of actually you're doing a good job. It's something that we don't get a lot as bookkeepers because it's we don't have a boss. So it's not like someone gives you a bonus and clients very rarely will say you're doing a good job because as long as you're not doing a bad one they don't really care if that makes sense yeah um so I think it's very hard to, it's very easy to underestimate yourself and it's very easy to not realize what impact you're actually making or when you're doing a good job so and it's very easy to take things personally if you make a small mistake or if a client questions you on something even if you're right it can be very easy to take that personally so I think it is just being kind to yourself in some regards and not having those massive expectations and understanding that it does take a little bit of time to build a business and get a good reputation. And But if you do a good job, then you'll get clients by word, word of mouth and you you can sort of start to build that up. And as I say, there are so many resources out there. I mean, yeah, so I set up, same as you were saying, I set up 10, 11 years ago, there wasn't anything like this. No. <laughs> but there are so many people out there that you can ask questions to that will won't judge you. They only want to help you. Um, and someone asked me the other day, there was a LinkedIn uh, poll actually, is competition or collaboration better? And I'd say, well, a little bit of competition is healthy um, because it pushes you most of the time collaboration is what this industry is about and as I say even if it's me collaborating with accountants whether it's if someone came to me with a property specialist question I know who I'd go to if someone came to me with something else I'd say right okay I can't help but I'm sending you to these people that can so don't expect you don't need to know it all you don't clients might expect you to know it all but that's just because they they don't understand what actually they're asking yeah. so I think there is the ability to sort of as I say be kind to yourself and understand that you you don't have to be the front of all knowledge you don't have you can go to a client and say I will ask the question or I have someone else or I will look into that for you without you actually that doesn't mean that you've not done a good job it means that actually you're probably doing a better job because you want to check that what you're going to tell them is correct or to provide them with the resources that they need to help them. Um, and a bookkeeper is 
I advise all my clients to have an account because I say the tax planning and X, Y, Z, but on the day-to-day running of a business, a bookkeeper is key. Definitely. Because we are the ones that they will come to with questions that we can help them with, that we can help with their systems, that we can make the real differences within their business because an accountant's going to come in once or twice a year, look at their tax, look at their situations, suggest a few things. They're not the ones that are talking to the clients day in, day out, understand how their systems work and understand how we can, how small changes can actually make a big difference to a client. And even if that small changes, we're going to sort this out so it's integrated so you don't have to think about it. And the amount of clients that will come to me and say, actually, the biggest change is I don't have to stress about it. I understand what's going on with my numbers. I understand how the system works or I'm happy that you understand it all and I don't care and it's running fine. <laughs> so I know there was a thing on the accounting web and I know Joe and Zoe did a, a post and there was all these things about the, the, the bookkeepers and the importance of bookkeepers. And there were loads of accountants coming back and going, oh no, no, there's, right, there's no good bookkeepers out there. And I'm like, well, actually, there's a lot of good bookkeepers out there. We just yeah. like to do things slightly differently to you, to the old school accountants. That's the other thing is old school accountants don't tend to like bookkeepers. They seem to see us as a, as a threat. And because we do something in a slightly different way, we might use technology better than them. We might suggest something better than them. They get threatened by it. But... I, th- I think <laughs> I, I, I was saying this before um, to, to, to the lady that I interviewed um, a, a few minutes before that the two separate skills so yeah. you, you you just unless you've worked in bookkeeping yourself um like I did I did bookkeeping then accounts then audit and then um everything in between it seems but unless you've worked in bookkeeping you can't fully understand what goes into bookkeeping and the day-to-day and everything else that goes with it so all I'd say to those accountants who've written some hateful comment along those lines is you clearly don't know very much bookkeepers then because you know bookkeepers work very hard there is again a lot of areas to cover um they are very very much um required um absolutely and again if you didn't have bookkeepers uh, accountants that are doing their year-end stat accounts for a client wouldn't have half the information that they have to do those accounts in the first place so so I think that's the thing is I think that's the other thing is that you can be a bookkeeper without any want to ever be an accountant. As I say, that's not something that I've I've got before. It was, I suppose, 10, 15 years ago, it was seen as a sort of stepping stone qualification. But it isn't. I mean, as I say, I've, I've built an award winning practice over 11 years I've got 45 clients I'm turning oh, away wow. work on, I'm turning away <laughs> work on a, month, on a monthly basis and that is purely by doing the bookkeeping only so there is no you don't need to have feel like you're a lesser person because you're doing the bookkeeping and you're not and because you're not an accountant I don't let any I say uh, not just yourself but anybody who's listening at this point don't let anybody ever make you feel that way because you know there's something missing on their side it's not you is what I'd say to that well that's lovely no some very very good tips and I'm sure when um when this does go live on the channel that the the individuals looking to become bookkeepers or trying to find out more information will be you know glued to the screen (laughs) taking down notes (laughs) sort of thing as we speak so that no that's excellent um but um I'll just ask is there anything else that you'd like to um add to um the interview any more you know tips that you have or anything else that you'd like to add no I think I think the thing is also obviously there's a lot of software out there nowadays there's a lot of bookkeeping software out there I think it's don't feel pressured into using one system or the other. Work out what works for you. Now, I, w- I know that there's some people that say they're absolutely fine on back on, on like Sage, Zero and QuickBooks. I'm not one of those people. I know that I know Sage, I can work fine on Sage, but I, if a client comes to me on QuickBooks, I will say no to them just because I know that I can't give the service that I would like to be able to give based on that on that software only because for me I've never found it the easiest thing to work with I'd much rather work with zero than quick 
works. So don't feel like you're ever pressured into it's fine to say no. Yeah. Even absolutely. if it's even if it's software, even if it's they come to you and you don't know how to do it, it's fine to say no. And that's where collaboration is great. Because if someone comes to me on QuickBooks and I say, no, but I know someone down the road that does is really good at QuickBooks, so I'll um put, put you in touch with them. So don't feel like you have to know every software out there. Don't feel like you, it's fine if you find one software you really like it, whether that's free agent, whether that's zero, whether it's whatever, whether it's QuickBooks, it's fine to, to actually just be comfortable on one software. And it's fine to sort of also, if, you, if you're happy doing all of them, do all of them. There is no set rules. You don't have to use, well, you do have to use software to some extent. Um, so you do whether whether that's bridging software at the lowest level or whether it's a full accountancy suite. Um, but don't feel like just because everyone else is using a specific type of software that you have to. Um, there are so many options out there. The market, software market especially, is growing daily um, for these tools. There are lots of tools we can use. Automation will not replace a bookkeeper because automation doesn't understand the human side of it so don't be don't be scared of software but also don't feel like you have to use it or you have to use a specific software agreed <laughs> okay well then um that was yeah, it was really really insightful actually um from my end and um yeah just i don't know i can't i can't thank you enough for coming on really that's okay i think that's the thing if 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 someone looks at me or listens to this or listens to your channel and is actually feels like they can make that difference and they can step out and they can become build up do their qualifications and set up their own business and that's brilliant perfect okay well you take care then um and yeah. again it was lovely speaking to you thank you very much right. you're welcome bye Laura.